Uh, these are our alumni. They grad uh, they, I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for volunteering your Saturday morning, afternoon, right, with us. Okay. So I'll let Winston start off introducing yourself and, and your degree and what you're working on at now and so on. Oh, it's working. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for being with us here today. Uh, as Prof. Damien mentioned, I'm Winston. I graduated last year, May, actually. I have a single business degree specialized in marketing. Currently, I'm working in DHL Supply Chain, the logistics company. Uh, other than that, do I need to share a fun fact? No, right? <laughs> you can go next. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sien En. So I graduated from MBS in July 2023. I'm now currently working at the Singapore Economic Development Board as an associate. Uh, during my time in NTU, I studied accounting. I was from the single degree program, so three years. I was also part of the NTU University Scholars Program during my time here. Yep. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Shini. I've just graduated last year, so also, also class of 23. Uh, I studied Bachelor of Accounting with minor in data analytics, and currently I'm working as a management consultant in PwC Consulting. All right. So, um, at this point, I could start off with getting them to uh, tell you about their experiences in school and how that led them down to their current uh, jobs, right? So, uh, think about questions you might ask, because again, I will probably leave some time, right, uh, for you to, I won't say interrogate them, but ask them, right? Because uh, at this point, I'm sure you have many questions about uh, the ex their experiences through the program uh, could be as could be as simple as whether the programs are stressful, right? Given that uh, they've gone through a three-year program as well as a double degree program, right? Is it very stressful to to pack two degrees into four years or to pack uh, a single degree into three years where everybody else is doing it in four, right? So um, and you can ask them about the hall stays and stuff like that, right? So. At this point, uh, let me just ask Winston about to describe his educational journey right, in school from the time that he was sitting probably in your place right, to graduation. Go ahead. Okay, thanks, Prof. Damien. Again, uh, my three years here have been fruitful, saga full, if I may share later. Uh, I would say that, yes, a lot of my seniors, juniors, friends, they will ask me, is uh, MBS cut short? The truth is, I came from a mass comm diploma. So coming to business, working with numbers, doing economics, financial accounting, management, very daunting for me. But to be honest, if you put in the work, I think it's doable. I just read out on my tutorials every other week, and I turn out fine I graduated. I'm working in an MNC. Uh, I'm doing well. In terms of my time here, I had plenty of time to work throughout university. So every summer, every winter, I'm on attachment. We, towards my final year, in year three, I trust I was already on my full-time payroll before I graduated. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's new. Okay, uh, so you got your job when? Sorry, what? When, when did you get your full-time employment? Six months before you graduated or? Oh, currently I'm at DHL Group, uh -huh. right? But prior to that, I was with an agency and they already started oh, paying me full-time. Because uh, in marketing, you get to work remote and part-time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, sure, I think I'll share a bit about what I did in school. So I think obviously that was studying, but at the start um, I did stuff that I guess would be considered a bit more fun. So I was involved in things like the freshman orientation program, I was the financial controller, I did things like joining the student club, doing things like you know running the business manager subcommittee for exam welfare packs. So that was more towards the start, right? I wanted to get a bit more fun in university. Later on, uh, I did pivot more towards career, so I wanted to explore finance. So I actually joined the, uh, the Investment Banking Club, Nine Student Investment Fund that does things like um, equity research, stock pitching. Yeah, so I think lots of opportunities to really explore and do what you want. It's not just studying. I think Prof. Damien also mentioned a part about, you know, three years being very cramped. I don't personally think so. Even though I did a three-year undergraduate study, I was lucky enough to, what do you call it, um, take on two leave of absence internships. So I took time off from school for two six-month blocks to do full-time internships. And I think it really helped to enhance my employability. Because when you're not just you know, there for 10 weeks in summer, 
you're there for six months, you can really have more time to really go through projects with the team, really get to understand how the industry is like, whether it's something that you really want to do. And I think that was something that was beneficial for me that you know, I could do because the program was for three years. So I think our black backgrounds are all very different. So I was from Malaysia, so I took an SS scholarship here to study. And my focus in uni was very different from there as well. So I was more involved in halls. I joined like hall jam bands where we have the chance to like perform in the hall concert. And then I also joined uh, JCRC, which is the hall committee, where we hold like, events for stu uh, our hall residents. So in the three years itself, I also had a chance to like in do multiple internships. I tried audit as an accounting major. I tried audit, I tried risk and consulting. And at the end, I chose consulting and converted it to my full-time job right now. Maybe you want to explain the, the whole accounting curriculum, right? What you went through in your first year, second year, and how you ended up <laughs> as an odd. I think the, the curriculum now is a bit different from what we experienced previously. But I think the first year is more like general, all-rounded kind of modules where you learn a lot of like interdisciplinary. Uh, dis yeah. Okay. Then in, sec in the second year, we have more like accounting modules where we have like accounting one, accounting two, taxation, and in year three, it's more in-depth. It's like consolidation, uh, business valuation, and that actually helps also. So for year one, I, the end of year one, I did an audit internship. At that point, I didn't have much accounting knowledge because I was from a science background, and in year one, I only had one accounting module. But I think a lot of things, like for internship, you learn on the job. So it was very okay for me. And yeah, so progressively, I, I gain more and more accounting knowledge, which also helps in my current role right now. Shinny? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. I actually wanted to add on, because I also did accounting, right? So I think Shinny covered a lot about you know, the financial accounting aspect of the curriculum and how whatnot. But we also touched on like, some of the adjacencies. So I think there were mods on like, accounting information systems, because you don't just do accounts and prepare like, balance sheets, P&L, right? You also need to know how to do the use the IT systems to actually prepare these type of things. We did things like advanced audit, uh, there was also strategic management. So, you know, the program really tries to develop you to be more well-rounded. You're not just someone who goes in to do the books in that sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, Winston. I actually agree with both of them. I'm not from accounting, right? But in terms of whether it was difficult to deal with or whatnot, I have to say that it really helped. I don't think it was mentioned yet, correct me if I'm wrong. But in year one, we are actually exposed to a spectrum of modules, and they are kept general and broad, which meant that I had time to acclimatize myself to the different specializations first before we all got to pick our specializations in year two. Right? And what made you choose marketing? I kind of knew I was meant for marketing when I came here. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was either marketing or I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, but I did enjoy the mods, and uh, attending the classes really helped me decide what I wanted to do. And then maybe I ask the other two accounting uh, professionals here: right? Why choose accounting as the as the degree? I think for me, uh, it was a very straightforward answer because I came from a science background. So in my high school, I did all the science, like biology, chemistry, physics. After when I thought about what to study in uni, I started looking at the brochure, crossing out everything I don't want to do. And then there's like accounting. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you working at now? I'm working as consult uh, consultant. Consultant, yeah. right? In in one of those. Uh, in big four. In a big yes. four, right? So here goes back to our our initial uh, narrative that you know, as an accounting degree, you can move beyond accounting into uh, consultancy and advisory services as well, right? And I think the truth is same for CNN. Right? Would you? Yeah, um, my story as to why I chose accounting is a bit different, even though I did come from a science background. So I actually come from a family of accountants. My dad and mom are also accounting trained. They also studied in NTU previously, so kind of was inspired to follow in their footsteps. Not that there was <laughs> Yeah, not that there was pressure on that front, but you know, I saw how like, you know, it gave them a good grounding in terms of I think knowing how to prepare and read financial statements is something that will benefit you when you go into the industry. Because, I mean, business will revolve around commercial issues such as this. So it's definitely a useful skill set to have. 
I also saw how they got the chance to be exposed to many different industries. Just because you do accounts doesn't mean that, oh, you are only in the financial services industry. If you go into audit, for example, you can audit many different types of clients. And it gave them a good grounding at the start of their careers. I was also interested in you know, doing money matters. I told you all how I did. I was the financial controller for orientation, for example. So I thought it was a good fit for me in that sense. Yeah. I think that, that brings then to Winston and, and maybe CNN and Shen, how uh, the curriculum uh, right, helps you, helped you, or currently helps you in your current roles, right? So for, for Winston, for example, you did marketing in school, now you're you are almost like a regional marketing professional, right? So what aspect of the curriculum do you still keep up with and that you find valuable right, in your current role? Okay. On that, I have to say, if I have to look back, since I largely do marketing and a small portion of business development now, something that we work on a lot is uh, on providing sustainable solutions for our customers in logistics. Right? So for example, when we do work with Coplay or F1, we are working on sustainable fuels. We're working on sustainable concept logistics. And on that front, we look back on some of the mods that we did take here in NTU where we talk about a lot of these portions. And in a lot of these activations, we did talk about RPA. In a lot of these activations, we also did talk about uh, the advance in technologies that we do use, like uh, AI chatbots, we use those to automate a lot of different uh, services that we do provide to our customers. And they scale on different ends. Some of the smaller customers, they require uh, fewer support. For some, of the, for some of our larger clients on a regional level, then uh, it depends on what they need. And uh, when we look back on what we did learn in school, they are still relevant. Of course, on the, on the ground, we still have to uh, get a little dirty and explore the technology up front. But beyond that, it really helps to have a head start. Okay, so then CNN already talked about how important it is to ha have a skill like uh, reading you know, uh, the financial reports of organizations and all that, right? So uh, for Shin Yi, for example, right, how does your accounting background help you win your advisory roles now? Okay, to answer that, I have to explain a bit what I do now. So I'm doing consulting, which basically means like helping clients, which are companies out there, to solve their problems. So what kind of problems that we solve? So for my department, there are two main things. So first, the first one is to improve their current processes. So we see what they are doing right now, like how they do things in their organization, and find places where there can be improvement to their process. And the second thing is to implement uh, enterprise performance management system. So EPM in short. So EPM system is something that uh, the clients can use to help them with budgeting and planning for their future finances. So finances is very really, like, related to accounting. And what I do day-to-day -day job. So for example, a few weeks ago, I was checking on the reports that we built in the system. So why do we build these reports? It's because these reports will be used as disclosure for financial statements. So everything is very related. And how does my accounting knowledge help with that? Without accounting knowledge, how would I know like, how these reports will work? How would I know like, fin how financial statements will look like? What's cash flow? Whether an item should be asset or liability? So I can say that accounting knowledge is kind of the base of my job right now. So without accounting knowledge, it's kind of like I have to learn everything from scratch all again in my job. Uh, at this point, uh, given that we have another what, 15 minutes, let me open up for questions. Folks, anybody? These people are a wealth of knowledge because they've been through the program, right? I, on the other hand, are on the other side of the fence. I cause their stress. <laughs> so, questions about school life? Could be anything. I see one at the back. Oh, oh. Uh, so, thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, actually, this question is directed more at uh, Shinny because uh, you said that you did a minor in analytics, right, along with your accountancy degree. Uh, so I was actually curious, did you manage to utilize these analytics skill sets in your role as a management consultant? Because I'm actually interested in uh, doing something related to both accounting and analytics. Or would you say there's another role that's more suited for that? 
you are interested sorry you're interested in both accounting and analytics uh yeah so just some background i did an accountancy diploma okay. but i'm also interested in doing analytics as well because i have an interest in it and um yeah i just like to know if you manage to utilize your analytic skill sets in your role yeah. i think that depends on what kind of roles you want to go in the future so when i took that uh in my mind, I wasn't sure what kind of career I wanted. So I was like, analytics is very useful nowadays, right? <laughs> like everything is about AI, analytics. Having one more skill set is better than not having to me. And in my, to answer your question, in my current role, uh, right now, I don't have to use any analytics, but my team is doing some uh, SQL thing, SQL, which is like database management, which is something I learned from my minor, which is the data analytics. So if my team needs me to help with that anytime, I am able to do it because I have the knowledge and skill set, right? Yeah, so it depends on what kind of role you want to venture in the future. And I feel like even if you don't use the analytics skills in your job, it's always good to have that knowledge. Like we don't have to do AI jobs, but it's everyone still know what's AI, what's like blockchain, right? Yeah, hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's a good question. Anybody else, folks? So then let's move on to uh, other areas, right? So when you were in school, right, and studying, um, would you like to share with us, you know, the, the, your hall life, if you were staying in the halls? Yeah, I, I'm more involved in hall because I was staying in hall throughout my uni. I don't have anywhere else to stay. <laughs> so... There's a lot of activities in hall. There's like cultural activities. So for example, jam band, dance, production. There's also sports. There's a lot of sports team in hall. If they don't have that, you can create it yourself. Because we have like inter-hall games, which happens every year end. It's a very big thing in NTU. So if you join sports team, it will be very involved in hall and it will be a very fun hall life. <laughs> yeah, so apart from that, there's also like hall committees which you can join to organize events for hall residents, which, and also like kind of enhance your skills. And because I'm a financial controller in my hall, so it kind of like helped me use my financial knowledge on my CCA also, which is a hall committee. So every year we get a budget from the school and we'll take the budget and see hmm, like this year, how can we use the budgets on our hall residents? Like what kind of events we can organize for them? Like do we want a supper run for them? Do we organize like, uh, carnival for them. So these are a lot of like fun activities that you can join if you are staying in a hall. So it doesn't matter if you are staying near or near or far from school. To me, it's the hall experience that matters a lot, like for university. Hey, may I chime in, right? So on the other end, unlike her, I also joined hall because I was FOMO. <laughs> but I do live opposite school, so it's like 15 minutes walk away. Yeah, <laughs> I joined in year two for about a year and a half. And I have to say, unlike her, I was a lot more mellow in my involvement in Hall. So I chose to focus on other portions in NTU, uh, like my career and my other club involvements. But I did get to experience Hall life on a different level. And things that I enjoyed was particularly bonding with my Hall mates. We were a lot more chill, so we did work together into the middle of the night. We went on cat hunts together that was planned by <laughs> the Hall Council, where we took photos with cats and posted them to win prizes. So these were things that were a little more, I think less time uh, consuming, but still fun and enjoying for me. So that was great for me. So it's interesting that you all have these kinds of experiences in addition to the workload, right? In school. <laughs> right. So uh, any, any, any thoughts on your club activities that you all would have uh, participated in? Oh. Okay, I guess I can share a bit on this. La. So. I was in the USP student club, right? So I talked about how I was a business manager and doing all of that. I also did some fun stuff. Like I went to join a student-run theatre production because I was like, hey, why not go and try something interesting, you know, performing arts rather than just be studying all day. So I think there's a lot of variety that you can get. I think everyone here has talked a lot about hall. And 
maybe just to bring across the point that Hall is not just one source of CCAs. We do have student-run CCAs within the schools. You have your business solutions club, which I hear they are doing a tour later or something like this, right? So if you are more focused on your career, you want to do case competitions, there's something for you there. If you want to join like other CCAs, like performing arts, you know, rec games, sports, or even dance, there is something for you. So wide variety of activities that you can really choose how you want to split your time on. It's not like I think back in poly or JC where you join one CCA throughout and that's it. You can join as many activities as you want. You have the freedom to go and scope how you want your university education to look like. And I think there are a lot of opportunities and seniors who would be really helpful there. In terms of the more career focused ones, right? I mentioned I joined the investment banking club because I was trying to explore what a career in finance could look like. So we will have all these seniors who are really experienced, you know, they went out to the banks, they learn how it's like in the industry, they will come back and actually do weekly sharings with us, you know. They will even do things like, how should you actually tweak your CV a bit so that um, the employer, when the recruiter comes to you, you can actually stand out from the rest. How could you even like perform in your interviews? What are the types of questions? So you get to meet other like-minded individuals who are also gunning for the same thing. You can help each other out. So I thought that was something that was really useful as well. Yeah, that's a good one. So I think the, the theme here that I'm getting at is about doing well, which is your academics, and, and also doing good, right? So you were volunteering with, uh, all three of you were volunteering with uh, outside you know, of uh, your academics in student clubs and stuff like that, right? Uh, would you like to share a bit more with the, uh, with the audience, right? Uh, all your, the volunteering activities with the community right, that you had experienced. I can take one a step at this first. Okay, uh, I did help out, not so much externally, but more internally. So during my time, I was actually a peer tutor for one of the accounting modules, uh, AC2101, if I remember correctly. So this is like a module that you usually take in year two. It's a more intermediate level one. So you cover things like leases, deferred taxes, financial assets, etc. So they actually invite us to actually come back and help our juniors. We ran a weekly one and a half hour session where you know we would just go through some of the questions that were explained in class. If you, for example, are really lost and you're not sure, you can come and approach students or seniors who have just gone through the mod. We will be here to actually give some tips and tricks, really sit down and help you out. Lah. So that's how I spend my time. I actually quite enjoyed it. I think it's good to also be able to help out your juniors, right? We all know how hard modules can be, but I don't think you are alone in going through that. You have your seniors who will actually help you out. You have your peers along the way. Funny thing, starting to look like I'm the dark horse because uh, I wasn't the brightest kid in the house. I was peer tutored. <laughs> and never, <laughs> and never a peer tutor. But on an external level within clubs and societies, uh, but, but did double down on what he said. I think uh, we have a lot of clubs and societies in NTU. When I first joined in year one, I basically lived at everything I saw. I joined union orientation, I joined corporate liaison uh, to do sponsorships. There were so many options, and one thing that I really wanted to mention was that we do have industry specialization clubs. Right? So uh, on that level, whichever specialization you intend to go into, that's a specialization club for that to bridge you to the working industry. And uh, there are opportunities within the club, and yes, we did do uh, volunteering activities uh, beyond it all. So in my year, I recall we did work together with Wheeling Huts, and uh, we went to uh, help out in the kitchen and all this food and packing eventually went out to the needy that need them. Then on an individual level, the school does support you in many ways to do your own fundraiser if you want. In my last year of university, I did manage to do a little fundraiser for Children's Cancer Foundation. Yes, where I auctioned off Ray-Ban's shades on TikTok Live. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to uh, keep a hold on the social, uh, social media, yes. If you all are wondering what the, this peer tutoring is about, um, we have a few uh, selected uh, courses or modules where the students, uh, where the topic is typically challenging. Right? And in these courses, many of the students uh, would appreciate a certain amount of uh, additional help. Right? And for those, for those uh, modules, what we do is we get students like you know, uh, CNN to volunteer. They don't have to be the brightest spark in the in 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 the uh, in the course, right? But they would have to have a 
passion, a love to help their fellow friends, right? Which is the, the, the necessary uh, aptitude to be a peer tutor. And what these peer tutors do is they spend about uh, an hour a week or an hour and a half a week, right? With their peers, right? Tutoring them on the topic. So, and this helps to level up everybody right, in uh, the program. Now, that is not the only curriculum support that we give. Um, for those who are coming in uh, this, let's say in, in August this year, many of you would have been out of school for some time, right? especially the returning NSMEN who have not touched mathematics in about two years. Right? So, mathematics skills, as you all know, degrade very fast. Right? This quantitative way of thinking degrades very fast. So when you come in, we uh, have this uh, a math refresher program, right? just to get you to start thinking in that quantitative way, because many of our first year subjects right, require that skill starting out. Right? So because you know, many, we are a, a business school in a tech university, right? many of our programs require a certain amount of problem solving, uh, abilities, right? So to help you jumpstart uh, and, and to restart your problem-solving skills again, we put you through that mathematics course. Okay. Sorry, okay. just to jump back a bit on when Sienna mentioned peer tutor, I suddenly thought of something. So I think mentoring is very a very strong culture in MBS. So we have a lot of like mentoring uh, program. So we have a student-run club called NBS Mentoring Club, yeah. where they match like, like first year or second year students who are still clueless to a senior who is already have uh, internship experience or specializes in the interest of what, like what you are uh, wanting to find out. So kind of it's like a one-to-one -one or one-to-two student-to-student -student mentoring. So you get a better idea of like what a career would look like if you are like going uh, to this path or like how can you like, excel in academics or CCAs or like school life in general? There's also other mentoring programs. So I think is, uh, they have this thing where uh, industry professionals come back as mentor for students. So I joined two where they really paired me because at the time I was very interested in consulting. So I actually had a consulting mentor who is really working for like five years and another who is already like CFO. So they, actually, I, I had a few sessions with them to talk like, oh, so what would it be walking down the path? Like, what's your experience, this kind of thing. So I think it's, this is a very uh, plus point of NBS, and it was one of the many reasons I ended up in where I am right now. Yes, uh, thanks for adding that point back in. I think I wanted to talk about NMS, but I completely forgot. <laughs> Right, I, I'm not sure about us, but in year three, when I was about to graduate, yeah, I, I did become a mentor for MMS. And uh, I did take on two juniors of mine who were in year one back then. So how the process goes is I'll talk to them, I think, once every two to three weeks. And I'll just tell them about how marketing life is like, how it's like in the working world. And uh, if they have any questions about marketing-related modules as well, I will be very happy to share more about how I did it. Uh, whether it was difficult or how I got through the hurdle. But while we're talking about ACE, something that I wanted to mention, I'm not sure whether Linda did, was that for MBS, ACE is actually our very own dedicated careers team. So what that means is that compared to other universities, and I've asked all my friends this, they don't actually have it. They do have their generic university careers team, but for MBS, ACE is dedicated to us MBS students only. So I did go, shout out to Leonard, uh, a lot of cover letters and uh, reviews, mocked one-on-one mocked -on -one interviews, and he did help me land a few good internships in NTU. Another shout out would be the work study program that they did launch, that I attended, I was part of their pilot program. Uh, something very exciting about it that I'm always very excited to share about is because you get to spend six months of your school life here, so I'm in a three years uh, direct honours single business degree program, but I get to spend six months at a prestigious company, Adidas, as an associate, and still graduate on time. I graduated on, on cycle. So it was on a regional level, everything was great and well coordinated, and I feel like they will, they will always be there to help you. You can schedule your appointments online, I think. Actually, just wanted to add on one quick thing about ACE, right? So the team is really very hardworking, and I think they do make a lot of efforts to reach out to students in terms of opportunities. One thing I appreciated was 
they actually have this Telegram channel, right, to actually blast out job opportunities, you know, networking you right, now. right? So, like, you know, instead of, like, going to, like, a career board, like, career fit, like, which is what we use, you know, these opportunities really come out to you. And, you know, just to add on a bit about, like, the mentoring program, I have friends who went through it. It's not just they pair you with a mentor and that's it. They actually send you for, I think, a course or something that teaches you, okay, how should you actually plan to engage your mentor? What should you actually go in to talk about? Because sometimes we may not know this as undergrads. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of support here. That's the message that we want to say, whether it's from, you know, the school, professors, your seniors, or even like your fellow peers here in the MBS. So thank you. All right. I think there's, uh, let me just check. Any burning questions, folks? Anybody? Hands up about mentoring, about the support that we have uh, for the students. No. Yep. Okay, so with that, uh, let me uh, thank the panel, Winston, Sien En, and uh, Shinyi, for their time this morning and for providing the valuable uh, insights into the program. Right. Can you please help me thank them? Uh,